In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your spirit all over the earth. Let the Holy Ghost live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from the generation, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces, be our advocate. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictu fructu ventri tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocetin ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictu fructu ventri tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocetin ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictu fructu ventri tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, noceti nora mortis nostra. Amen. Welcome to Corridentrix TV. We welcome you in a special way to this series. Uh, since we began the uh, talk on the precious blood devotion, for the fact that this month is the July. Uh, the month that Jesus says is the great month of devotion to his most precious blood. So far, we have been able to do reflections on the chaplet of the precious blood, the new chaplet as given by Jesus. And then we have also been able to do a comprehensive review or explanation about the July Novena, the three great uh, Novenas in the month of July. Today we'll be focusing specifically on the Consolation and Adoration prayers. We know that the Precious Blood Devotion, as given by the Agonizing Jesus Christ, begins with the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Jesus said, say the chaplet of the Precious Blood immediately after the rosary of my most holy mother and that is followed by the litany and then the consecration to the precious blood if we follow the way it is written out in the prayer book what logically follows is the consolation and adoration prayer it may not have occurred to you that your god needs consolation you clearly understand that he needs adoration, but you may not understand why he needs to be consoled. If you recall the death of Jesus, some of his words on the cross, he, in the popular seven, devotion to the seven words of our Lord on the cross, in one of them he says, I thirst, I thirst. And they put vinegar and uh, offered him when he said, I thirst from the cross. If you're also familiar with the congregation of uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, St. Teresa of Calcutta, the crucifix displayed in the convent of the Daughters of Charity. On the top of that crucifix is written, I thirst. Why would Jesus be thirsting? In the pressure of blood messages, the agonizing Jesus Christ said, I thirst for the truth which you have abandoned. Has it occurred to you, has it ever occurred to you that the post conciliar church have largely abandoned the Catholic truths and dogmas? Has it ever occurred to you that in our time, many heresies are propagated and pro practiced under the guise of modernism in the church? He says, I, I, I test for the truth you have abandoned. Within this abandonment of truth, there are many sacrileges that are committed, especially against the most holy Eucharist. 
So I test for the aborted children. I test for the many children who are killed in their mother's wombs. I test for the poor whom you have abandoned. The number of reasons for his tests are many. He mentioned there that I test for the many abominations that are setting up in the holy place. They offered him vinegar to drink on the cross in an effort to uh, attempt to quench a physical test. When he tested it and found out it was vinegar, um, he didn't drink it. As Jesus have explained to many mystics that he was actually testing, just like he's testing today, for the many souls that are getting lost. He's testing. For the children who have been aborted, he's testing for the innocent who is put to death in their mother's womb, he's testing for the many who do he said for the many who depart daily from this life and that nearly all go to hell because of the sins of impurity. He's testing for many reasons. He told this year, my son. Your God is deeply offended. The abomination is great. And this is part of the reason why Jesus needs consolation. In explaining prayer, he sent one of the saints to tell us that prayer is consolation. Prayer is adoration. Prayer is reparation. Prayer is acceptance of God's will. And that in prayer, we talk, we not only talk to God, but we also seek to hear from Him. There are three occasions during which God speaks to His people. According to that saint, one, as you read the holy books. Two, in your daily duty. daily duty or during your daily duty God speaks to us he speaks to us during when we read spiritual reading if we reflect quietly we'll understand how he's speaking to us pointing out how that reading applies to us and thirdly he speaks to us during prayer if we learn to listen so prayer is more than petition phase of prayer Unfortunately, what most people know today is the petition phase of prayer. A prayer becoming exclusively a means of getting something, uh, usually something material. But prayer is much bigger than this. And in terms of consolation, we are called to console our God who is deeply offended, to console him for the many number of souls that are getting lost. And he says, when many souls convert, we remain in adoration to thank him. It is this aspect of consolation and adoration um, which was somehow introduced somehow in the Sacred Heart Devotion when Jesus uh, spoke to Saint, uh, Saint uh, what's her name? The Saint of the Sacred Heart devotion, Margaret Mary Alokwek, Sacred Heart Devotion uh, Mystic, and even requested certain aspects that are similar to this devotion. For instance, the Thursday Night Adoration, the Reparation, First Friday Reparation, which uh, the way I see it was pointing to the Third Friday Reparation, against the desecration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. And so your God needs to be consoled and then he needs to be adored. We'll go to the messages in order to help us reflect upon this. 28 July 1997 The venue, Parish Chapel Lolo, and the title is what? Consolation and Adoration Prayers. During this I, my reparation prayers, 
I saw the vision of the agonizing Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, bleeding above the angels and saints. Above the angels and saints were adoring the agonizing Jesus Christ. Then I heard a voice which commanded me thus, Barnabas, pick up your pen and write down whatever you hear. I obeyed, and the consolation prayers and adoration prayers below were dictated to me with songs for 50 minutes. The consolation prayer begins with, Father, when you are about to send your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to the world with the aim of saving us, and bringing a new paradise into the world to the most precious blood out of love he said whom shall i send who will go to redeem my people the heavenly court was silent until your son answered here i am send me father honor and adoration be unto your divine love praise and worship be unto you unto your name O loving jesus christ take consolation O organizing jesus christ the reward you got from your people for your benevolence was sin. They sin and blasphemed day and night against your holy name. They fought against you and disobeyed your commandments. You can see the rest of this prayer uh, in the consolation prayer in the precious blood prayer book. And the way it begins, the question, whom shall I send who will go to redeem my, my people? Very similar. Uh, to what Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel had, uh, whom shall I send, who will go, who will go for us? And then Ezekiel said, I am a man of unclean lips. And one of the cherub angels took a coal of fire from the altar in heaven uh, to purify his lips. Today we are being purified by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Immediately after the prayers, uh, pressure blood from the sacred head dropped on my head 12 times. I came back and recorded. Though I cannot remember the tune of the songs, at a later date we were instructed to use the inspired song composed by our spiritual director to fill the gaps. Our Lord said, I am the one who inspired those songs in him. So you can see uh, more details about this in the uh, precious blood prayer book regarding the consolation uh, and adoration prayers but in order to reflect more deeply about the promises which these two prayers carry because they go together he says, one, my children, I promise to protect anyone who devotedly consoles and adores me with these prayers against evil attacks. He will not die a sudden death. He will not be burnt by fire. These are three elements contained in just one promise. He will be protected against evil attacks. He will not die a sudden death. He will not be burned by fire. Sudden death is something that um, makes people go. They depart from this life unprepared. Ideally, um, the person should have received the last sacrament, received absolution, received the Holy Eucharist, received the Viaticum, the extreme unction, which Our Lady said, empowers the soul to make the great leap from this life into eternity a leap that is not an easy one he will not be burned by fire even if this has there's been a miracle concerning this somewhere in the u.s uh, when the pressure blood devotion came new to the u.s i think it was a forest fire that broke out in a certain part of the u.s eventually burning homes and in a particular home where uh, this devotion and the devotees were, the place was not consumed by fire. Two, my children, I promise to protect anyone who devotedly consults an adomi against the attack of evil spirits. He's emphasizing 
part of what has been said before, a prophecy to protect anyone who devotedly consoles and adores the agonizing Jesus Christ against the attacks of the evil spirits. Keep in mind that the nine choirs of angels are invoked in this consolation and adoration prayers. We'll look at that as we go on. Three, any soldiers who pray these prayers before entering a war field will not be defeated. No bullet will have any effect on him. We've had testimonies concerning this about people entering a battle zone and people were being shot. I think it was an unrobbery operation. And in one particular situation, it was the prayer book that stopped a bullet. Can you imagine that? Four, if these prayers are said to a woman in labor, she will have lesser pain and any woman who devotedly says these prayers will deliver safely. Many testimonies are bound concerning this. We know that uh, the curse pronounced on woman after the fall of Adam and Eve is that in great pain the woman will, will deliver. Uh, some even die. Some even die. You only need to visit maternity wards uh, to hear the loud wailing of women at childbirth. And so you will understand, you baby, if you have visited maternity wards, you'll be able to appreciate uh, why this pray promise is very important. Number five, put these prayers on the head of any child stopped by evil spirits. My cherubim will protect him. The cherubs are one group of the nine choirs of the holy angels. Six, I promise to protect any family from lightning and thunder effects. And any house where these prayers are will be protected against storms, the elements. And these are things we are expecting they will increase as the days of the great warning and great tribulation approach. You know, the elements will increase in their ferocity, the, the thunder, lightning, fire, earthquakes and so on. In this particular case, uh, those who do this devotion, especially the adoration and consolation prayer, will be protected from lightning and thunder effects and against storms. Number seven, if these prayers are said to the dying, said to, said to the dying person before his death, I promise that his soul will not be lost. This is a solemn promise. If the prayers are said to the dying, in the hearing of the dying, before his death, Jesus is promising that a person's soul will not be lost. 8. Any sinner who consoles and adores me through these prayers will obtain conversion. Number 9. I promise to protect them with my precious blood and hide them in my holy wounds. All who console and adore me. Poison will have no effect on them. I will guide their five senses, the more special modification of the senses, which, as we have said before, are windows to the soul through which evil, evil spirits, and all manner of uh, things can penetrate if they are not properly modified. Number 10, I promise to baptize aborted children who are killed daily in this world. I'll put a deep contrition in the hearts of their parents to the prayers of my precious blood. I've personally had uh, some experience concerning this in the compound where somebody committed an abortion and some other people within the same compound were doing this devotion. Uh, the person was filled with deep contrition. You can imagine somebody who had never been to mass or church for so many years after the abortion suddenly showing up almost every day at mass deep contrition because in our time people kill their consciences somebody commits an abortion and instead of being remorseful she defends it uh, as a right of women you don't have the right to murder anybody whether it's your brother sister mother or your child you have no such rights why because you never created anybody and therefore you do not have right to destroy 
anyone. Rather than defending the ill done, you should be remorseful, and Jesus is promising to put deep contrition in the hearts of those who uh, commit this. Keep in mind that as Catholics, the Catechism says there are nine ways in which we share in the sins of others uh, by encouraging them, by flattery, uh, by silence, by all sorts of things. We participate in other people's sin. I advise him, I remove the child. After all, you are working, you know. After all, things are hard. After all, the person will not marry you and so on. If you give this kind of advice, you are sharing in the sins of murdering an unborn child. And you should go to confession. Number 11, all who devotedly console and adore me with these prayers till death will join the heavenly armies and choirs. I will give them the morning star. There is an allusion here to the fact that those who devotedly say these prayers will become a part of the choirs of the heavenly powers. When we did the talk on the holy angels, we gave the classifications of the nine choirs from the cherubim, the seraphim, the thrones, um, the dominions, the powers, the virtues, the principalities, the archangels and the choirs of the angels and we did say that the doctors of the church reclassified these nine choirs into three hierarchies uh, the force the cherubim the seraphim the uh, thrones uh, have an executive function they, they work directly with god they serve him directly and then the second hierarchy dominions the virtues and the powers uh, are primarily concerned with protection and guidance of the planetary system and then of the elements earth, wind, fire, water and so on. They are fully involved anytime God wishes to chastise mankind because it is through the agitation of these elements that God accomplishes this. And so they, you, you need to invoke them. And one of the promises of the chaplet of the pressure of blood itself that those who do the first July novena uh, they will uh, be guided by the dominions and the powers. So you see that, for instance, the adoration prayer, the first adoration prayer uh, says that we, we praise that um, we ask for God's loving kindness and love and in gratitude for an uh, ask for change of life for the better. And that's the conversion we read about in that province. He said, May the holy archangel Michael, with your host of angels and saints, join us and lead us closer to you through this adoration. You know, Michael was the, the first apostle of the precious blood. He led the holy angels, the faithful ones, to defeat the dragon through the blood of the Lamb, as we see in Apocalypse 12. And then, so Michael and the archangels are invoked again against the huge red dragon in the, in the second part of the adoration prayer. So that through the intercession of Saint Michael and all the archangels of heaven, we might conquer the red dragon. The red dragon is a theism, uh, the loss of belief in the existence of God, for which we have mentioned before that the, according to several mystics, uh, the first major reason why God will chastise the world is due to uh, denial of the existence of God. You go to the next adoration prayer. Uh, it says, may you allow a drop of your blood to fall on their hearts uh, so that through the intercession of the cherubim and seraphim and all the angels in heaven, all men will turn to you. Again, this is a great uh, petition for conversion. The Kerub and Seraph angels are among those who specially serve God. They belong to the first hierarchy. Um, and uh, they are there within his throne. These angels are closest to God. Indeed, the highest of these choirs is the Seraphim, followed by the Kerubim. And because they are so close to God, they are invoked in this particular adoration prayer um, for that all men will return to God. One of the petitions Jesus gave an American mystic regarding the end time, he said, pray 
that all men will say yes to God and no to Satan. It's talking about conversion and turning to God rather than turning away uh, from Him. Every sin we commit, especially mortal sin, is a turning away from God. This is how some of the uh, doctors of the church de define sin. It's a turning away uh, from God because that is the only thing that separates us from God. The next adoration prayer it says, pour your precious blood, that all your enemies be scattered through the intercession of the thrones and powers of heaven and all his hosts, the thrones and powers. These ones belong to the second hierarchy, and the thrones, powers, and even the virtues that they constitute the second hierarchy. And they are invoked here um, for... Invoke here against the enemies of God. Let the enemies be scattered through, you know, confusion, book confusion in their midst, scattered through the intercession of the thrones and powers of heaven and all its hosts. A little word about the powers. Um, the powers are that, that particular choir that have a special faculty against the demons. According to Ancilia Domini, in the presence of the powers, the demons must give way. Yes, every angel, even the guardian angel, have great power against the demons. But it is the choir of powers that have a special faculty against these evil spirits. The next adoration prayer again uh, calls on another choir. It calls on the dominions. It says, sprinkle your most precious blood that by the intercession of your heavenly dominions and all the angels, captives shall be freed, and lost sheep will come back under one flock. Captives shall be freed, those who are in bondage, those who are held down by one kind of evil force or the other, through the intercession of your heavenly dominions and all angels, captives shall be freed, and lost sheep, that's those who have deserted the faith, Lost sheep will come back and under one flock. We, we, we keep emphasizing the fact that Jesus prayed the prayer of unity for all Christians in the Gospel of John, and it is still his desire that this be accomplished. Uh, and it talk, it, the prayer petition here talks about lost sheep that they may come back under one flock. If you go through the second uh, paragraph of that particular uh, pray, prayer i say we beg for the release of those in captivity and for the return of non-catholics into the one holy catholic and apostolic church founded by you sprinkle your most precious blood that by the intercession of your heavenly dominions and all the angels captives shall be freed and lordship will come back on that one floor amen by the next petition um another choir is invoked and that's the power of virtues we adore your most special blood which pours out from your pierced hands and feet we beg you to protect the living saints in the whole world against the activities of the antichrist pour your most special blood on them that by the intercession of the virtues and all the angels they will end their struggles in heaven amen to the intercession of the virtues and all the angels, the virtues are another uh, group of angels of great interest. They help us grow, as the name implies, in virtue. It means personified strength. Virtue is strength, vice. Vices are weaknesses. Virtues are personified by angels. Vices are personified by demons. There is an angel of silence. There is an angel of faith. There is an angel of humility, there is an angel of chastity in the person of St. Raphael, and so on. So they are not just abstract things. Uh, the choir of virtues in a special way help us. And as Celia Domini says, when people get converted newly, as they begin to advance in holiness, it is the choir of virtues that urges them on, often without their uh, knowing it, urges them to more penance, to more sacrifice, uh, to more prayers, you know, that they may end their struggles in heaven. And this one has, um, you know, 
a special help for us against the activities of the Antichrist. And that is why prayers like this do not need to be neglected. The next adoration prayer involves the choir of principalities and all the angels. So we adore you, O most precious Lord and water, we implore you to save the life of every innocent unborn child and baptize aborted children with the water from your sacred side in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. May they, through the intercession of the principalities of heaven, and all the angels reach the everlasting home. Amen. It's actually, it constitutes a baptism for aborted children. And then uh, from the principalities uh, that they will in, in, intercede. Now, we did say when we were looking at the nine choirs that the principalities, from them are taking the guardian angel of every parish. And part of their work is to pray that the unbaptized become baptized and that's the same function here in this prayer dictated by the agonizing jesus christ himself that through the intercession of the principalities uh, that the the aborted children because nobody will talk about their baptism you know the parents have gotten rid of them and um, it's assumed that they don't exist they do exist and they, except a man is born of water and the holy ghost they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven they may not have seen themselves, but the weight of original sin also affects them. And so they cannot enter heaven except there's a baptism for them. And that is why the prayer of baptism for aborted children have been included here. Um, I didn't begin say all the prayers as they are from the very beginning. Uh, what I just did uh, is to um, read out part of the sections that invoke uh, the uh, choirs of the holy angels. Normally, each adoration prayer ends with, uh, you know, bowing down to the ground as the visionary saw the angel do, with the forehead touching the ground, saying, "May the most precious blood that comes out from the sacred head of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the tab tabernacle of divine wisdom, the sunshine of heaven and earth, cover us now and forever. Amen." O most precious blood of Jesus Christ, adoration and praise be to thee now and forever. If you cross check back with the consolation prayers proper, um, you see why Jesus is consoled and why he needs to be consoled. In these prayers, he detect, dictated the first part of the consolation prayer uh, talks about how we have been offending God. So agonizing Jesus Christ, the reward you got from your people for your benevolence was sin. You pay him back with sin. They sin and blaspheme day and night against your holy name. They fought against you and disobeyed your commandments. Father, be comforted through the voice of your heavenly choirs. May the voice of your dominions console you. That's amen. That's part of the uh, first uh, consolation uh, prayer. Uh, by the time you go to the second one, he said, who will, in remembering your mercy and kindness to your people, console you enough? Take consolation, be comforted, O loving Jesus Christ. May the voice of your heavenly choirs of angels and archangels praise you and console you. Amen. Now it is the, and then you see the invocations. After the one, our Father, Hail Mary and Glory be. Agonizing Jesus Christ, bear it, Lord. Agonizing Jesus Christ, we love thee. Agonizing out of Jesus Christ, thy kingdom come. And then it goes with a song. The third part of the consolation prayer um, also does something similar. Oh, merciful Jesus Christ, take consolation. We pray you and have mercy on your people. May the voice of your heavenly virtues console you. So it's a choir of virtues that is invoked here. Um, in an attempt to console the agonizing Jesus Christ, in an attempt to console him. And in this particular third one, uh, there is a prayer in the second paragraph uh, concerning the neglect of the sacrament, the abuse of the Holy Eucharist, the communion in the hands of uh, the unordained. So we console you. For the sins men commit against you in the holy tabernacle, 
Apart from that, the relegation of the tabernacle to an inferior place and side chapels, as you can see in the Rosa Mystica prayer book, is part of what is also being referred to here. The coldness and neglect with which, which they show in your presence, you, know, you come in, you don't genuflect, you start discussing, no sign of uh, having that sense of the sacred that disappeared from the majority of Catholics. For those who receive you unworthily, you know, unworthily come, receive coming, and for all the aspect of disrespect which men commit against you, forgive, pardon, O loving Jesus Christ, although men crucify you again and again in your mercy, bear all these suffering and loving creatures. O merciful Jesus Christ, take consolation, we pray you, and have mercy on your people, and the voice of your heavenly virtues console you. Amen. By the fourth prayer, um, it talks about, you know, the, he said, nevertheless, many innocent souls have been aborted daily, and their cries wound your sacred heart. We pray you to forgive men all their trespasses. May the voice of the heavenly cherubim and seraphim console you, and may the tone of the evangelization of this world comfort thee. So he evokes the cherubim and seraphim in consoling our Lord for abortion. And the fifth one, um, similar invocations are done um, to console our Lord for the cruel torment he has suffered and then to adore him, say adoration to the wounds in thy sacred body. Take consolation, almost sacred heart bears all this. My adoration to your sacred head who bears the shameful crown of thorns, who console your most sacred heart, who bears all this place. Adoration to the two hearts of love that met on the way to Calvary. Take consolation, hearts of mother and son. Take consolation for all the anguish and grief suffered on the way to Calvary. Adoration to your most special blood shed on the streets of Jerusalem. Take consolation, Lord, for your blood serve as the atonement. Adoration on Calvary, the creator of heaven and earth, stood naked in the sight of all men. Adoration to you, agonizing Jesus Christ, who bears this shame for the remission of the sins of the world. Glory, honor, and adoration be yours, who humbly accepted the cross of my salvation. On lying on the cross, the soldiers straightened you and nailed your hands and feet. Honor and adoration to your sacred wounds and your most precious living blood. We pray you. Bear all these great pains and sorrows you suffered on the cross. Adoration to your holy dead, spotless Lamb of God. Reign forever, O most precious blood and water, from your sacred side, O agonizing Jesus Christ, your kingdom come. Concludes by saying, One our Father, one Red Mary, and one glory be, as done in the previous consolation prayer. And agonizing Jesus Christ, bear it, Lord. Agonizing Jesus Christ, we love you. Agonizing heart of Jesus Christ, your kingdom come. This is all part of the consolation. And then the hymn uh, to him. And then it ends with agonizing Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Redeemer and Creator of the world. Forgive and have mercy on the world. Agonizing heart of Jesus Christ, receive consolation. That prayer is said three times. And these are all what constitutes the consolation and adoration prayer. As you are overburdened with the prayer of give me, give me, give me, or asking petition only, understand that prayer is beyond petition. It includes it, but it also includes other things. And as we have had today, the consolation and adoration prayer. Your God needs to be consoled for the large number of souls that are getting lost every day. A mystic was told that in our time that over 90% of Christians go to hell every day. Over 90% of Catholics go to hell every day. That's what we were told, an American mystic was told. And this is not something that can keep Jesus happy. If you were the one who died on the cross, who bled to death so that people would be saved, and you hear this, you will be disappointed. Jesus told the pressure blood visionary, my son, your God is making a big loss. Your God is making a big loss. That most of the people whom I shed my blood for are going to hell. What need is then for was it for me to shed my blood if this large number of souls will go to hell? Your job is to console him 
your job is to make reparations so that many who are on the road to perdition uh, will uh, be converted and saved. Look for the nearest Catholic bookshops around you and ask for the precious blood prayer book. Buy it and use it ravenously. May God bless you as you do this.